We'll wait and see if you do that afterwards. <laughs> I want to take you back. A, a lot of you weren't even born then. I want to take you back to the year 1966. America was at war in Vietnam. President Johnson, uh, Secretary of uh, Defense, Rock McNamara, knew we had to win the hearts and the minds of the people of Vietnam if we were going to succeed. Lyndon Johnson got the idea because he went to Vietnam. They had no television. They had radio, no television in the north, and none in the south where we were fighting for the south. And he said, let's bring television to Vietnam. It was an exciting prospect. I got recruited and I joined the Foreign Service and they sent me to Vietnam in May 1966 as the television program advisor to the government of South Vietnam. Now, they never had TV. One of the first things we did, we shipped in hundreds of black and white 27 inch TV sets. Put them in uh, stands about this high with doors that would lock and we even hired Vietnamese people to guard those during the daytime because the broadcast started at night. We had big loudspeakers to project the sound because all over Saigon, in the hamlets, around Saigon, wherever there was an empty space, uh, an open market, a uh, hamlet square, uh, a school building, auditoriums, we put a free TV set. So that's how they got to watch. We had a little studio, 40 by 40, it had been a motion picture studio, so we could produce our programs there. The trick was, Mr. Johnson, our president, wanted TV to start now. Well, it takes 12, oh, not that long, but it takes four or five months to build a 1,200 to 1,400 foot tower for transmission. And he said, that's too long. So the Department of Defense came for our rescue. They deployed to us two big old Constellation airplanes. And those of you who are old enough to remember know it was such a graceful, beautiful passenger plane. Four engines, propeller driven, a lovely plane. They gutted it, except for two or three rows in the back. They put in a couple of uh, videotape recorder, playback machines, audio equipment, uh, we had slide projection, we had film projection, we even had a little studio, I mean a little chair lighted with a little camera. We could do station breaks live from the air. These are called flying platforms. We had two of them. One would fly Monday, the next Tuesday, the next Wednesday. The reason Tanzanut Airport, where we worked out of, uh, was a happy hunting ground for the VC. And those of you who don't know VC, the VC are the Viet Cong, and they were our enemy. And, and uh, they shot at the planes all the time, all at Tanzania. In fact, they blew off the tail of one of our planes while it was parked. So every day, if you flew on Monday, the plane on the ground was being patched for sniper rounds. I gotta get my water, I'm just getting dry, just a minute. Well, excuse me. I didn't have to fly the plane very often, but I had to now and then. It was my job to see that the young Navy crew filled out the log properly, got the programs on the air the way we had scheduled it. I just had to do that not more than once a month. The first time I went out there, this is where the adventure began. I didn't know what I was getting into. See, they picked that plane up in the air, 10,000 feet, had a projecting antenna out the back end, slowly circled Saigon and broadcast however many programs we got done that day. It was usually around two hours worth. So I showed up, a jeep took me out, I got out of the plane, I got out of the car, walked over to the plane, steps were ready, young Navy guy was standing there, and he handed me a bulletproof vest. <laughs> well, it's obvious what it is. I thought it was funny. I put it on, and then you tie it with three little bows here in front. <laughs> and I started up the steps, 
And the young man said, wait a minute. He said, you don't wear that thing. The bullets come from the ground up. <laughs> Sit on it. <laughs> you mean I have to worry about that? I got on, took it off, put it in the seat. Now, I'm sure you understand this. That plane, and it's a big one, had to get up in the air as fast as possible to keep that angle down so that people couldn't shoot at you. All the planes did that. So here's what happens. You get in, fasten your seatbelt, sitting there, the pilot starts revving up the outside motors and the two inside motors, so you're going run, 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 and run, 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 the whole plane is shaking, and the wings are kind of flapping, and I think, well, this is interesting. And then pretty soon, run, 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 and it goes down the tarmac, not very far, before they put the nose in the air, and it goes right straight up. I am sitting, laying on my back with my feet on the ceiling of the plane, and that plane is being asked to do things no airplane is ever asked to do. And we go, and work its way up into the sky, out of range finally, get to 10,000 feet, and we start circling. And I do, I, I, I'm sorry you couldn't experience it. When you look down on that beautiful city, with the Saigon River over there, and we got Cambodia there, and uh, to, the, uh, to the west, the China Sea, I mean, it was a beautiful sight. And I knew Saigon pretty well by then. And I looked down at those people. We tried to broadcast things that would improve their lives. We tried to broadcast information that would be helpful to them in some way. We had, here's where you get your vaccination shots for your kids, and here's music, and here's some education. And they love Kailung. The Kailung are the old Vietnamese operas that tell the history of the Vietnamese people. That was their favorite programming that they had. As I say, we only had about two hours a night that we broadcast. And I would sit in that plane and look down. Maybe it's a Pollyanna in me, but I think, I hope that the information that we're sending down to those people and those shacks and those hovels, those cardboard boxes, I've seen where they live. I hope it helps improve their lives some way. Well. After we're finished, then the plane has to come down. It's the reverse of what we went through before. I'm still strapped in. They get over Tanzanude Airport, and suddenly, nose down. This time, my seat isn't even in the seat. I'm just hanging up. From the belt. Then, at the, what seemed to be the very last moment, plane levels off, bang, on the tarmac. And I sat there. My legs were giving out, but I stood up and I picked up the bulletproof vest. I handed it to the young guy that had given it to me. And he looked at my face and he could tell how I felt. He looked at me and he said, no sweat. And I will those went to you, Buster. <laughs> but that's my television aloft. Thank you.